Well, before we talk details of your contract, I would like to have a little chat with you about what it would mean to be the face of enchantment. Not, of course, your official duties, <laughs> but I think what Miss Kane would expect from you, your demeanor, all that. Well, I think this has been a very productive preliminary meeting, and I'm sure if Miss Kane hires anyone to... What? Erica! Thank goodness! Welcome home. Well, thank you. I'm very glad to be here. April, Stephanie, how are you? Nice to see you. Erica, you look wonderful. If you'll excuse me, I have so much to do tonight. We will be, of course, contacting you via your agents. Yes, of course. Oh. Welcome back. Wonderful to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, cover up, because it's raining. Okay. Mm. Well, well, what did you say? What did Fascinella say? Do you really think you should go right straight to work? I mean, you should go home and rest. Aren't you tired? We don't want your wedding present. Mail it to us. But I went to so much trouble to find you. You know, I know you did, but we don't want you here. We, we spent a lot of time and effort trying to make sure that we had time alone, and we want to keep it that way. I'll take care of this, Liza. Here, there you go, Doc. You really enjoy playing your little torture games, don't you, Doc? Well, it's over. Now, I'm going to take you to your car. And you're gonna get in your car and you're going to leave. But I'm already paid up for the night, Adam. I have a room right down the hall with a lovely view of the valley. Although there's not much scenery tonight with the storm and all. Lightning and thunder. <laughs> Isn't it funny how nature seems to know what's gonna happen? I'm not gonna us? let you ruin Liza's wedding or her life. You can't stop me. Damn it, what does it take? What do you want? I know you have money. But somebody can always use more money. <laughs> Oh, Adam, are you offering me money? Yes, money. Don't you know me better than that by now? Money, yes, but not for its cash value. Mm. As a gauge to my humiliation, doctor. Five million dollars. Ten a million. That's a lot of humiliation. That's right. Sorry, Adam. You see, I've been having the time of my life investigating you, besting you at every turn, watching you sweat, imagining Liza's face the moment she learns the truth. No, I'm sorry. No, I can't turn back now. Like all good things, this must come to an end. It's over, Adam. My game and your chance for happiness. Finito. No, no. Wait. Hayward, it's time, Adam. Now, unless you're prepared to really kill me, it's time for me to drop this bomb. Wait, wait, wait. Let me tell her. <laughs> well, I... <laughs> I never really imagined it like that. Hayward. Please. Oh, Adam. I never imagined you doing that either. Saying please? Hmm. Now, how can I say no to that? After you. He's still here? Liza. I have something I need to tell you. Val's not here. He's off dealing with that dreadful Jerry Reeves. Jerry Reeves? He's still around? Yes, and he's uh, making a big problem out of nothing. I mean, Val is, uh, has his hands full trying to keep him from getting his story. You know, Erica, that is the only reason I'm here. It seems to me that someone had to hold down the fort. I thought I made it very clear when I found you here answering my mail that you are ill-equipped to make any decisions for enchantment. And you are absolutely right. I am woefully ill-equipped to replace you, my dear. But I'm also not one to stand around while everything catches fire. 
You know, I mean, your campaign to return to beauty has disseminated into chaos. I was in constant contact with everyone involved, by phone and by fax. Well, you certainly couldn't tell it by the, by the befuddled and confused faces around here, dear. Honestly, I felt that I simply had to sit down and mollify these people somehow. You? You took meetings about my campaign? It, it was a responsibility I certainly did not relish, but I kept thinking, what would Erica have me do? Admit that nobody's in charge here? I was in charge. I am in charge, and everyone else seemed to know that, Vanessa. Now, if you had a problem, why didn't you simply pick up the phone and call me? And what were those women doing here? How dare you interview models for my campaign? And I'm so glad you asked me that, Erica, because I have no idea what those women were doing here. And you know something? I was afraid. I was so afraid that you had set up those interviews from Brazil. You thought I had set this up. Can you imagine what I thought? that the news wasn't good. The news wasn't good and that you wouldn't be able to even, you know, be a spokeswoman for your own company anymore. Well, that is certainly not the case. In fact, David's suggestion that I go to see Dr. Fashionella, that was a godsend. Really? I'm overjoyed. Well, he has developed a brand new treatment and it will probably restore my face completely. A new treatment? Oh, dear. You're not going to let him experiment on you. No, of course not. He's been performing the surgery for over eight years. It's been proven safe, and it's very effective. Oh, good. You feel very secure to put your whole future in this man's hands, then? Yes, I do. I mean, of course, there are risks, and he's explained those to me. Well, he's, he's not just telling you something you want to hear, right? Dr. Fashionella is a world-renowned physician. Yes, I know, darling, but I've had so many friends go down to South America, and the stories I could tell you, honestly... Yeah, I'm sure you can, but don't. I know exactly what I'm doing, and into whose hands I am putting my entire future. Wow. Uh, uh, hello, Hello. Erica. Hello, Dimitri. I had no uh, idea you were back. Well... I guess you don't recognize me. I mean, I do look more like Zorro than Erica Kane right now, but... Well, if you didn't know I was back, then, uh, Why are you here? Well, I, uh... received some disturbing information on what... has been going on around here. Oh, really? From whom? Well, from some of your friends, Erica. Well, I'll tell you something. It's become a little difficult for me to know exactly who my friends are these days. Well, then it's time uh, you were reminded exactly who is a friend and who is not. I'll tell you what I am sick to death of, and that's people who seem all of a sudden to think they know what's better or worse for me. Erica, I just heard you were back. So what happened? Were they able to fix your facial injuries? Well, no, not yet, but I did come back very encouraged about a new treatment. Well, that's good. It's just good to have you back in the office, and not a moment too soon. Oh, really? What do you mean? Erica, I know you're really tired from your flight, but I do think you should listen to what your friends have to say. In fact, let me give you the short version, okay? Earlier today, Mrs. Dillons came in expressing some concern that somehow I was going to loot enchantment while you were out of the country. You think that Vanessa is stealing from me? No, that's not what I said. I, I told really her... I didn't take offense. Because I do know, Erica, that you, you engender a special kind of loyalty. I mean, time after time, your friends flock around you to protect you when there's really no protection necessary. I mean, honestly, Erica has nothing to fear from me. I'm, I'm not uh, quite sure of that. Neither am I. <laughs> Mrs. Bennett, at the very least, has overstepped whatever authority you gave her when you left. I mean, she's been holding auditions for the Return to Glamour campaign. Which I was just telling you about. And she's been making unauthorized expenditures. Which I was about to tell her about. You know, obviously, you've kept yourself quite busy in my absence, and I do intend to get to the bottom of that. But right now, what puzzles me most is why you two suddenly think that my interests need looking after as if I was some sort of an invalid. Uh, yeah, Erica, you, uh, <clears throat> are going through a time in your life when you are susceptible more than you've ever been. You mean because of this? Yes. 
Professor, um, ever since you nearly got David booted out of medicine, he's been determined to find a way to hurt you and me and Jake. All right, all right, all right. Come on, fast forward. He played a very patient game, but he finally found what he needed. He found a way to hurt us. Yes. What? He found information that, that he thinks will tear us apart. Information? Information about Adam? I promised that I would let him tell. When are you going to get it through? That the thick, pathetic brain of yours. That there is nothing that you can tell me about Adam that I don't already know. I know everything about him. There is nothing that you could tell me that would shock me. Do you, do you understand? Now, just please leave. This is, I'm getting stressed out. Oh, like, calm down, Liza. Just, just stay calm. It's all right. Stop. Are you all right? I feel like I'm... I feel like I'm... Oh my gosh. This is a nausea. I think the baby's coming. Are you sure? This feels different. Different how? My mouth is really dry. Dehydrated? Yeah. What else are you feeling? I, th I think this is labor. That's what I'm thinking. OK, come on. Let's get you to the hospital. No. Uh -huh. You know, as a doctor and as a, a, a guy that I got to be polite to, you're fired. I don't want you to be around you anymore. Just get out of here. It's raining like crazy out there. There are flood watches all over the place. You may need me. Now he's going to drive me to the hospital, and Dr. Clater is going to be there. So buzz off. You heard her, Doc. I'm taking her to the hospital. Erica, you, you've never been through anything like this before. The, the accident that happened in David Hayward's car the night of the snowstorm. All we're doing, the people that care about you, is reaching out to you while you recover. You feel I can't think for myself? <sighs> well, if you think Vanessa Bennett's your friend, I'm not so sure. Remember the day that you were at the high school and the press showed up in droves? How do you think they knew where you were? How? Vanessa Bennett told them. Is that true? Why would I do such a thing? I mean, what kind of a vile person would do such a thing? Apparently, Liza Colby told her where you were, and then the press magically appeared. You know, you're bordering on vicious slander. Liza Colby knows the truth. Well, Liza Colby doesn't like me any better than you do, then. You've insinuated yourself into Erica's life ever since her accident, and you've alienated all of her real friends. Why do you make this all sound so nefarious somehow, when all I'm trying to do is help Erica do the best of my ability? Now, she's a perfectly bright and a very strong woman. If Erica doesn't want me around, I can very easily just go away. Please, will you all be quiet? Everyone has had their say. Now it's my turn. My accident on the night of the snowstorm caused an injury to my heart and an injury to my face. But my brain was completely untouched. I have a very clear idea of what's happened to me, and I totally resent being treated like a victim. Everyone has overstepped. And what rankles me the most is that each of you seems to have forgotten that with or without this, this mask, I'm still myself. I'm still me. I'm, I'm Erica Kane. And I don't need to be told what to feel or what to think or whom to trust. Erica, that is not what we were doing. Please, at Dimitri, all. let me finish. Janet, you have been a very loyal accountant to Enchantment. And I do appreciate your zeal in looking after my interests in my absence. This is not about zeal, Erica. When I see someone like Vanessa Bennett saddling this company with debt, I feel obligated to bring it to your attention. And you have brought it to my attention. Thank you. Look, I'm sorry. I know this isn't a good time and it's upsetting to you, but I don't think you realize what's going on around here. 
You've made that very clear. Please, go. You may not like hearing what I have to say, but I don't appreciate being dismissed like the maid. You're not the maid, you're the bookkeeper. So go, keep books. That wasn't necessary. Oh, please, Dimitri. Yeah, all right, uh, you know where I am. Oh, Erica, this is all my fault. These people are your friends. They have your best interest at heart, you know? And I, um, I feel so terrible that I would come between you at all. Why don't, why don't I just, just, just go talk to her? No, Vanessa, don't go, not yet. The day of the TV interview at the high school, did you have anything to do with the crew showing up there? Yes, Erica. That was my fault. The bridge is right up here around this bend. It's just a couple of miles past that. Are you OK? Yeah. Oh. Just imagine that uh, it's uh, Colby's first day of kindergarten. Oh. Well, she's going to be very brave. Just like her mommy. Oh. <laughs> What are labor pains compared to your first day of kindergarten? <laughs> she won't be scared. She won't even whimper. She'll be so excited about what the world has to offer. Oh, you're right about that. And so I'll make one of those clay molds where it's her handprint, and we'll hang it in the living room on the wall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's right, it's just right around this, this curve. Oh. What is it? The bridge. It's flooded out. When I took the information from Liza Colby, I was going to rush over to you and... I told the nurse on the floor to make certain that David got the message, and she must have called the press. The nurse? You know, Erica, I had no idea. I, I, I did, didn't understand the delicacy in protecting a celebrity of your stature. I mean, I've always considered myself a, somewhat of a celebrity, you know, but it, actually I've never been anything more than in the uh, also-present column. Well, you know, the paragraph, the last paragraph that says also-present Vanessa Bennett or Mrs. Victor Bennett, even worse. With all your marriages, you've never been referred to as Mrs. Anybody. All right, look. I can understand how this could have happened, that perhaps the nurse or someone else called the press. Well, rest assured, it's never going to happen again. Well, don't worry about it. Vanessa, all my things are still in the car. Would you please have Carl unpack them? Of course I will. I'll, I'll have her get started and some dinner for you, too. Thank you. Can we be admission supervisor? This is Dr. Hayward. I'm calling about Miss Liza Colby. Has she checked in for maternity yet? No? Thank you. Where are we? I know where we are, but it, it's, we just passed Stewart's cabin. Hurry up, madam. Okay, okay, hold on. What is it? What is it? We're stuck. Oh. Thank you. 